Today we're going to dissect the clam. It's in the phylum mollusca. We're looking at a number of different mollusks in class, but, but we're going to be looking at the clam. The clam that we love in our clam chapter. So it's not only a, a fun organism to dissect, but a tasty one at that. So we're going to divide it up again by external and internal. And these are all the external things that we need to look at on both foot, in-current siphon, and ex-current siphon, valve, anterior, posterior, uh, ventral, and dorsal. You should know those. Interiorly, we're going to look at the in-current and ex-current siphon. These are kind of hard to see from the interior uh, portion. The anterior and the posterior muscles, palps, foot, mantle, gill, mother of pearl, visceral mass, which will have the digestive glands, stomach, gonads, and intestines, and the heart and the pericardial sac. We do have another resource for you here, and you can take a look at the posters and use the posters to help you when you're dissecting. I'll have that out in the front of the class. That could be a, a valuable resource if needed. Okay, well, let's go ahead and take a, a quick look at the clam. In fact, let me just come up here real quick and we'll get a, a look at it. The clam. Um, it's an interesting organism. It's bilaterally symmetrical. It means that you can put a line right down the middle and you basically have a, a mirror image of it. Like we are bilaterally symmetrical. You can draw a line right down the middle of a human. You have an eye on each side, a nostril on each side, incisors, canines, okay, and arms, etc. You do the same thing to a clam. Of course, it's not going to have arms, but still, it's still bilaterally symmetrical. You have a valve on each side, don't you? And so let's go over the anterior, posterior, dorsal, ventral stuff. The anterior side is where the umbo is. This is the umbo. These little bumps right here are the umbo. Where they come together, it's called a hinge. If we were to open this up, it would hinge up, open. So here's the anterior end, closest to the umbo. The posterior end is the opposite side. So let's go over that again, so I didn't confuse anybody. Anterior is where the umbo is. Posterior is opposite to that. Dorsal is the top where the hinge is. Ventral is where the opening is on the bottom. Most of the clams will have a little tiny piece of wood in the valves, the shells we call valves, right there so that you can stick your scalpel inside and cut the muscles, the adductor muscles. Right there is the, is the, little, the little wood chip. In fact, if your wood chip is not present, it's really hard to open the valve. And I'll have to get a pair of pliers in there and show you how to open it, okay? All right, let's go open the little bugger. All right, we want the, the clam to have the ventral side up. We want to grab the scalpel. And again, we want to be very careful as to how we're holding it. When we're cutting here, we're going to go straight down and make sure we cut the two the muscles there. There's two adductor muscles or muscles that bring the clam uh, together, the shells together, the valves. So I'm going to put my fingers right up the top here. I'm going to carefully put in the scalpel and I can feel uh, the muscle right here. It's called the adductor muscle. And I'm going to just put a little pressure there, okay? And I'm going to cut. I just have to feel the muscles right down there. And notice that I'm not, I'm cutting straight down and away, and then I'm going to turn it and do the same thing on this other side. I'm going to slip my scalpel down in there, and I'm going to cut. And I put in a little bit of pressure on that valve, just a little bit. Okay, turn it again. Always want to make sure that you're cutting down away and your hands are on top. There we go. Okay. I'm going to kind of gently pry that open. As I do, I'm going to look and see which side, I'll let you kind of look at that, which side is coming off a little easier from the, the tissue from the valve. And it looks like I'm going to go with this side. So I'm going to cut that right there. Let that lay open. Okay, put that down, off, down and away. And open that up. There we go. Okay, now let's go through some of those, those anatomical parts. I'm going to need to get my, my list to make sure we cut, cover everything, but um, let's take a look at them one by one here. First of all, 
let's go with the in-current and ex-current siphons. They're really not uh, exceptionally visible here on, on, these, on these specimens, but you've got your in-current siphon right here. See this little indentation? The water comes in through the in-current siphon, goes over the gills. Okay, here are the gills right here. The gills have cilia on it and mucus. And as the water moves in, the mucus collects uh, all the little tiny pieces of detritus, microorganisms, sand. You can see on top of here there's some of the detritus that it's feeding on. And it will come out through the excurrent siphon right here. Now there are usually uh, some, some tubes that kind of come out here. So incurrent siphon over the top of the gills, excurrent siphon. Okay. Next thing is the anterior muscle. Now remember, to find the anterior side, we look for the what? Yes, you are right, the umbo. There's the umbo right there. So the anterior muscle must be right here. The anterior muscle. This whole section right here is the anterior muscle. The posterior muscle is the opposite side. So anterior muscle, posterior muscle. Okay. Uh, the next thing are the palps. Now here are the palps. This is a bilaterally symmetrical organism. So here's the palps here. On the opposite side, there's some more palps right here. So there's the palps. The palps lead to the mouth. The mouth's kind of hard to see. I kind of cut through it right there. So we've got the palps. Here's the palps. And the palps help guide the mucus loaded with food to the mouth. Okay? All right. Uh, we got palps foot. Here's the foot. It's a muscular foot, very, very muscular. And this foot extends outside of the valve and is used for, for movement. It's very, very hard and muscly. The gills we looked at here, some gills here. In fact, if we turn it around, look on the other side, and we move the foot, you can see that there are some gills right down here. I know it's kind of hard to see, but there's gills right down in there. Here's the palps again. All right, let me turn that back around. Okay, uh, mantle. Mantle is this right here that lines the, the valve. And the mantle actually is what makes the mother of pearl. The mother of pearl is the, the light color that we see that lines the, the valve. In fact, when a clam makes a pearl, it's because you get a little piece of sand or grit you know, in that valve and um, it kind of it causes a little irritation, I'm sure, to, to the clam, but it secretes mother of pearl around that, that sand grain and it forms a pearl. A cultured pearl, what they'll do is they'll pull this back, put a little plastic bead in there, and the mother of pearl will be built around the plastic bead. And so that's how they make a cultured pearls. Uh, visceral mass, let's do the heart first, the heart and the pericardial sac. If we look um, just ventral from the umbo here, we kind of move part of this gill out of the way. Let's see if we can see the, the heart. Here's a pericardial sac right here. You might have to get a little closer. Here's a pericardial sac, and I'm kind of, kind of moving that out of the way right there, see? That's the pericardial sac. I'll tilt it just a little bit so you can see it a little better. Sorry. Okay, so here's a pericardial sac. Here is the heart right there. That's the heart. In fact, I'm putting my probe right through the opening of, of one of the openings of the heart. So we've got the heart and the pericardial sac. Pericardial sac um, covers the heart. All right, can I put that back down again so we can get in position? Uh, let, let's take a look at the visceral mass now. The visceral mass is this portion right here. See this big bump? That's the visceral mass. So is it, is it correct to say that the visceral mass is posterior to the umbo? The umbo is here, so it is behind the umbo, right? Okay. Is it correct to say that the visceral mass is dorsal to the foot? Yeah, I think that's right. We could say that the foot is ventral, okay, below the visceral mass. So those are the kinds of 
uh, questions that you should be able to answer in terms of where things are located. Let me give you another one. Um, the palps are, an true or false, the palps are anterior to the visceral mass. Here's the visceral mass. Here's the palps. So the palps are in front, right, of the visceral mass. So here's the visceral mass. Here's the umbo. Here's the palps. Yeah, so the palps are definitely anterior to the visceral mass. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and take a look and see what's inside the visceral mass. So this is a little tricky. What you have to do is you have to grab the, the tweezers or forceps, and you're going to hold on to the foot, and you're going to flay open the visceral mass. Fillet a visceral mass. Some of you might like um, oysters or clam chowder. In that case, you know, you're eating what we're dissecting, which is kind of weird, but yeah. I love smoked oysters. Oh, they're awesome. Essentially, you just pop a little bugger in your mouth and there you go. Okay, let's take a look at some of the internal parts here. Again, we cut open the visceral mass. That was what we did. We just cut open the visceral mass. I'm going to hold that open for you right here. A couple things that are really noticeable. This section right here, all of this, is called the digestive gland. The digestive gland, okay, if I kind of put my probe right in here, you can kind of see that space. See that space right in there? That's the stomach. The stomach is surrounded by the digestive gland, okay? That space is the stomach, which is surrounded by the digestive gland. If you look in the rest of the, the visceral mass here, see these little tiny gristly pieces? It kind of looks like gristle. Okay, that's the intestine. And I've kind of cut through. You can kind of see the tubules to the intestine right here, the little channels, kind of gristly. And what is um, surrounding the intestines, which looks kind of butterscotch-like, are the gonads. And they actually make, um, you know, the gametes. Okay? So again, I'm going to close this up. What do I call this bump? That's correct. The bump is the visceral mass. <laughs> if I open the visceral mass, fillet a visceral mass, then I find a green blob, different color sometimes. And inside that little space right there is called the stomach. Okay, digestive gland. We've got a little gristly tubes in here. That's the intestine, the butterscotch stuff. That's the, um, the gonads that will produce the gametes. Okay, really quickly. Let's, uh, let's go over all the internal anatomy here really, really quickly. All right. This right here is the mantle. I'm going to be moving this around a little bit, so... Hopefully you'll be able to see it and I don't get it out of the camera here, but here's the mantle. The mantle secretes the mother of pearl, which makes up the valve. Here's the foot. The foot can be used in movement. This is an adductor muscle or a muscle that, you know, would bring the clam, you know, close. It would close the clam. This is opposite side of the umbo. So this is the posterior muscle. This is the anterior muscle. Notice that I cut through it and here's you know the other side to it. So posterior muscle, anterior muscle. Here's a gill. Okay, there's the gill and the gills also on the other side here. Okay. There's the gill on the other side. The palps. There's the palps. Okay, visceral mass. If I open the visceral mass, I see the digestive gland, I see the stomach, the butterscotch gonads, and the tubules or intestines. Again, the incurrent siphon comes in ventrally. The excurrent siphon comes out more dorsal to that. Uh, the pericardium per or pericardial sac. Let's look at that real quick. I know that's kind of hard to see, but it's this membrane that actually covers it's a membrane that covers the heart. And right there is the heart. Okay, so here's the heart, pericardial sac. And I think we have about everything. Now, again, let's go over the external. 
Let's close this up. Where the umbo is, anterior. Opposite to the umbo, posterior. Where it hinges together, dorsal. The opening, which is the bottom side, is ventral. This is a bivalve, also in the phylum mollusca. Now, when we're all finished with this, of course, we want to clean up our station and, and we'll throw this away. You may not keep the valves. I know a lot of students want to keep the valves, but they will go in the garbage. So don't ask me to take them home, please. Uh, you will study your notes, your take-home notes. You'll study this video and also your PowerPoint and take your uh, take-home quiz. You may use your notes. Good luck. And Remember when you're finished with your dissection, actually before you even start, you should take all your specimens and put them back in your, your box with your period. So if you're in A1, they'll be in A1 box. Take your buggers, put it in the box. Okay? All right. When you're all finished uh, with your dissections, you also need to clean off your tray. You take your organism, say your goodbyes, place it in the garbage. You also need to take a little bit of cleanser. And, and I mean a little bit. Some of you have a habit of using too much. A little bit goes a long way. So, that's a little too much. <laughs> uh, a little, yeah. Don't put that much on it. <coughs> and go ahead and clean off your desk. Every single period will be cleaning off our desks in between dissections. So it's, it's your responsibility to make sure that it's nice and clean. Okay, we want to clean that off. And you also, see there's an awful lot of, of comments still left on there. So I'm going to quickly go, I'm going to quickly rinse it off, make sure I get the comet out of the sponge, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to try to get, I'm going to try to clean that up, you see? So that when the next people come in here, they're not going to have a lot of comment all over the desk. Now, I'm going to need to do the same thing I'm going to clean up my dissection tray. So I carefully take out my utensils, and this is the one I want to be careful with. I'm going to take the sponge and just rub off any tissue that's left, like so. So that's nice and clean. I'm also going to take the dissection tray and wipe that out. So that's nice and clean. Okay? So now if I have any tissue on this equipment, I'll clean that off as well. Place that back in the dissection tray. Now I'm ready for the next period. Okay? Enjoy.